Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about 3D point cloud tiling, a technique that allows us to break down large point clouds into smaller, more manageable pieces. In this presentation, I will define what 3D point cloud tiling is and why it is important. Then I will give an overview of the structure of this presentation. And of course, we will see how to do it using Cloud Compare. To begin with, let me define what 3D point cloud tiling is. 3D point cloud tiling is the process of dividing a large point cloud into smaller, more manageable tiles. This is done to make the processing and storage of the point cloud more efficient. The basic principle behind 3D point cloud tiling is to divide the point cloud into tiles that can be processed and stored separately. The basic idea is to divide a point cloud into smaller chunks or tiles, each of which contains a subset of the original points. The tiles can be created based on various criteria, such as their spatial location, size, or density. For example, we can create tiles that cover a fixed geographic area, such as a city block or a neighborhood. Or we can create tiles that have roughly the same number of points, regardless of their location. Once we have the tiles, we can process them independently, in parallel, or in a distributed fashion, depending on the application. But, why do we need 3D point cloud tiling? Well, let's consider some of the challenges we face when dealing with massive point clouds. First, rendering a complex point clouds in real time can be slow and inefficient, especially when using a single machine. Second, storing a large point cloud in memory can quickly exhaust available resources, leading to crashes or out-of-memory errors. Finally, scaling up a point cloud processing pipeline across multiple machines or clusters can be tricky as it requires dealing with data, partitioning, load balancing, and synchronization. These are just a few examples of the issues that tiling can help address. Tiling of leader point cloud is an essential technique for various reasons. Firstly, it enables efficient processing of large point clouds by dividing them into smaller, more manageable tiles. This reduces memory consumption, improves performance, and simplifies data management. Additionally, tiling allows for interactive visualization of point clouds, making it easier to navigate and explore the data. Furthermore, tiling can improve accuracy by reducing errors introduced by processing large point clouds as a single entity. In conclusion, Tiling of LiDAR point cloud is a crucial technique that can enhance the efficiency, accuracy, and usability of point cloud data. In this demo of tiling for 3D point cloud visualization, here we showcase how tiling can be helpful for visualizing large point cloud data sets. Specifically, we demonstrate the use of Patree and its utilization of an octree structure for efficient visualization. This demo highlight how tiling can improve the performance and interactivity of point cloud visualization, even for datasets containing billions of points. There are several techniques used for 3D point cloud tiling. The first technique is regular grid-based tiling, where the point cloud is divided into a regular grid of tiles. The second technique is octree-based tiling, which uses a hierarchical structure of octree nodes to divide the point cloud. The third technique is KD tree-based tiling, which uses a KD tree to divide the point cloud into tiles. Let's compare the different techniques used for 3D point cloud tiling. Regular grid-based tiling is a simple and straightforward technique that is easy to implement. However, it can result in a large number of empty tiles, and the grid resolution may not be optimal for all parts of the point cloud. Octree-based tiling, on the other hand, can adapt to the density of the point cloud and provide a more efficient representation of the point cloud. However, it can be computationally expensive and may result in a large number of small tiles. KD tree-based tiling can efficiently represent the point cloud and provide good spatial locality but it may not be optimal for irregularly shaped point clouds. But since LIDAR data is considered two and half dimension, the regular grid-based or the quadri tiling are the most optimal. Others than tiling, here is a list of what you can do to handle a large point cloud. First, clip to a specific region in a point cloud. Clipping is when you toss away the points outside of a defined boundary. This can be mega helpful in creating a manageable size to work with. 
If you provide a 3D solid as your clipper shape, you can also perform a cubic clip. So maybe you want a manageable size to work with, but you don't want to clip out important features and make the earth look like it got crushed by a giant steamroller. Thinning a point cloud reduces its overall volume, for example, by removing every nth point. Here we've drastically thinned the point cloud without losing the gist of the data set, resulting in sped up processing time. Given a line and a point cloud as input, you can generate point cloud slices or profiles along that line so you can use them for analysis. Slicing and profiling is a great way to reduce the overall size of your LiDAR dataset and focus on what you need. In this example, we retrieved slices along a highway line and left the rest of the point cloud out since the area around the highway is all we care about. Now that we have a basic understanding of the theory behind tiling, let's put it into practice using Cloud Compare. We'll start by creating an automatic regular grid tiling and a semi-automatic tiling using iterative sections. First, let's open our last file that we want to tile. Before we start tiling, let's take a quick look at the dimensions of our point cloud in top view mode. To do this, we can use the point picking tool and measure the distance of the length and width. As you can see, our point cloud is relatively small, measuring approximately 150 meters by 250 meters. Now, let's delete our point cloud and reopen it. But this time, we'll select the tiling panel instead of loading. Here, we can choose to tile our point cloud in the XEI, XZ, or IZ direction. Since this is an aerial LiDAR dataset, we're primarily interested in the XY planar grid. We also have the option to specify the number of tiles we want to subdivide our point cloud into. For example, if we set the number to 3, we'll end up with 9 tiles at the end. Finally, we'll need to choose the path where our tiles will be saved and click on the Tile button. If we have multiple point clouds as input, we can simply click on the Tile All button to tile all of them at once. With just a few clicks, we've created a tiled version of our point cloud that can be more easily managed and visualized. The tiled structure allows us to view and interact with specific sections of the point cloud without having to load the entire data set. Now that we've created our tiled point cloud, let's load it into Cloud Compare. To load all the tiles, we could repeat the same process for each tile. or simply click on the Load All button. Alternatively, we could just select all the tiles and drag and drop them into Cloud Compare. Once loaded, we can see the results of our tiling. Instead of a single large point cloud, we now have smaller tiles that cover the same area. But the question remains, did our tiling process result in any missing data? To find out, let's compare the merged tiles to the original point cloud. We can do this by right-clicking on the merged tiles and selecting information to view the number of points. As you can see, the merged tiles contain 2.5 million points, which is the same number as the original point cloud. So, we can confirm that our tiling process did not result in any missing data. Now that we've seen how automatic tiling works, let's take a look at the semi-automatic procedure for tiling. Instead of creating tiles with predefined dimensions, this method allows us to create repetitive sections with specific dimensions. To do this, we can use the Sections tool in Cloud Compare. We can choose to manually select the dimensions of the section or enter the box thickness dimensions in the X, U, I, and Z directions. So, we've seen how to use the Sections tool to create sections with specific dimensions. 
But what if we need to create multiple tiles with the same size? Do we have to go through the same process for each tile? Thankfully, the answer is no. Once you've found the right size for your sections, you can export multiple slices along a specified axis. In this case, we're trying to create nine tiles. So we'll select the X and Y axis as the direction of repetition. When exporting multiple slices, you can choose to create a gap between the slices. But in our case, we want our tiles to be seamless, so we'll set the gap value to zero. After we've set everything up, we can simply click OK, and Cloud Compare will automatically create our tiles for us. This is a great way to quickly create a large number of tiles with the same dimensions without having to go through the process for each tile individually. In fact, by dividing the point cloud into smaller tiles, we've made it easier to manage and visualize. Now we can easily navigate through the tiled structure to view specific sections of the point cloud without having to load the entire dataset. This can save time and improve performance when working with large point cloud datasets. So, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to create a gap between your tiles, don't worry. It's a simple process that you can easily repeat. First, you'll want to choose the dimension of your box. Or, if you prefer, you can simply click the Restore Old Dimensions button to go back to your previous settings. Once you have the right dimensions, select the X and Y axis and introduce a specific number as a gap. For my example, I chose 3 meters as the gap distance. With these settings in place, you can now see my 9 tiles separated by exactly 3 meters. To verify that the distance is correct, all you need to do is use the point picking tools to measure the distance in the horizontal plane. As you can see, the distance between the tiles is exactly 3 meters, just as I specified.
That's all for this video. We have tried regular grid-based tiling and semi-automatic tiling using iterative slices. Regular grid-based tiling is a straightforward approach that divides the point cloud into equally sized tiles, while the semi-automatic tiling approach uses iterative slices to create tiles of variable sizes. It was demonstrated on a small point clouds, but overall these techniques can help optimize processing time and improve the accuracy of results with larger data. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.